Hey guys, in this video we're going to be discussing about the resolution of forces. If you enjoy educational content like this, please hit that subscribe button. And also if you are learning something from this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button because it tells YouTube that this is a good video and YouTube will show it to more people. So let's get right to the lesson. Let's say I had a sloped surface like this and I placed the pen on the surface. When I release it, it's going to be accelerating downwards. But let's think about all the forces that are acting on this pen and their direction. Let's say this was the slope and this was the pen. Now let's figure out all the forces acting on the pen. First, of course, we have weight. Since it has mass, there will be weight acting on the pen. That's labeled that as W. And then since the pen is touching the surface, we have a normal reaction. And let's say it's a smooth surface, so let's make friction negligible. Let's ignore friction. So there are only two forces acting on the pen. And you notice that the pen accelerates in this direction. If the pen accelerates down the slope, that would also mean that there is a resultant force down the slope as well. But where is this force coming from? As we can see, one force acts on the pen perpendicular to the surface, the other force acts downwards. Now, this is where resolution of forces comes into play. So, we know that from this, there must be a force down the slope. And that force is actually a component force of the weight. Let's call it Wm. So, this Wm is part of the weight. It's a component of the weight. How do you find the magnitude of Wm? This is when we apply resolution of forces. Let's try to resolve weight here. Now, remember that a force can be resolved in any direction. It will have an effect in any direction until 90 degrees to the force. What do I mean by this? This is weight. So weight will have an effect in this direction. Weight will also have an effect in this direction. In this direction. It will have an effect in this direction, in this direction. So there are components of weight in all these directions until perpendicular to the force. So if this is 90 degrees, then the weight component here, let's call it Wx, this will be equals to zero. Weight will not have any component at an angle of 90 degrees to the original force. Same goes with the other side as well. Here we will get this Wx as well. This will be equals to zero. Now what about beyond 90 degrees? If we go beyond 90 degrees, and if you perform the calculations that we are about to learn in a little while, then you will realize that you will get a negative value. When you get a negative value, that actually means that the force is in the opposite direction. You have to remember that force is a vector quantity. So if you get a negative value, it means the force is actually in the opposite direction. So therefore, when you resolve forces, it can only go up to less than 90 degrees. After that, there is no effect. So when we resolve forces, we normally resolve it into two forces. When we do resolution of forces, we resolve the forces into two forces that are perpendicular to one another. Remember, you can resolve in any direction as long as it's up to 90 degrees from the original force. But we normally resolve into two perpendicular forces for the sake of calculation. Let's look at this question. Resolve the following forces to their horizontal and vertical forces. So this is F. F has a magnitude of 40 newtons. And the direction of F is 30 degrees to the horizontal. Now we are required to resolve this force to the horizontal and vertical component forces. So what to do? First, let's draw the forces. So this will be the vertical force. The vertical component of the force. So let me call it Fy since it is along the y direction in the y plane. And then this force will be the component force horizontally. So let me call this Fx. Now the component forces, when we sum up the component forces that have been resolved perpendicular to one another, then we should get the value of the force itself. So this is essentially addition of vector. 
when you add Fy and Fx, you must get F. And since the direction of the forces are perpendicular to one another, we can form a right angle triangle. So let's form our triangle of forces here. So here, let's follow the direction. Let's draw F first. This is the force. So this will have to be the hypotenuse because this is the largest value. A component of a force will never be greater in magnitude than the force itself. That doesn't make any sense. The force is the greatest value. Now, let's add the components to our triangle. So we have Fx in the horizontal direction in this way, this direction. This is Fx. And then we have Fy going up like this. And remember, we have resolved to horizontal and vertical forces, which means the angle between the two forces is 90 degrees. So the angle between the two component forces is 90 degrees. So now we have our right angle triangle. Then let's include the angle that we have. So we have 30 degrees over here. So just follow 30 degrees is the angle between F and Fx. So between F and Fx, this is 30 degrees. So now we have our triangle. Now we have all our values. Now, if I wanted to figure out what is the value of Fx. So here, since we have a right angle triangle, we can use trigonometric ratios. Since I have the angle 30 degrees, and I have the adjacent side as Fx, so I will use cos of 30 degrees to include the adjacent side. So cos of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees would be equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. So this will be equals to the adjacent side is Fx over the hypotenuse, which is 40, which is the fourth itself. So rearranging this and making Fx to be the subject, Fx would equals to 40 cos of 30 degrees. And this value is 34.6 newtons. So you can see the value is less than the force itself. The force is 40 newtons. The component of the force 30 degrees from the force is 34.6 newtons. So this is how we resolve it to the horizontal component. Now we can apply the same thing to the vertical component. So the vertical component here is opposite to 30 degrees. This is opposite to 30 degrees. So if we are going to deal with the opposite side, then we should use sine. So sine of 30 degrees will be equals to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So this will be equals to Fy, the vertical component, over 40. So again, rearranging and making Fy the subject of the equation, we will get 40 sine of 30. Sine of 30 is simply half. So half of 40 is 20 newtons. So this is how we find the vertical component. So this is the proper way of doing it. Once you fully understood this, then we can use the shortcut. I strongly don't recommend the use of the shortcut until you're very familiar with exactly what you're doing. But if you notice this carefully, the shortcut is, look at the angle. This is the angle, 30 degrees. When we are resolving along the angle, that means we are going along the angle, along the 30 degrees, then the component would simply be the force F multiplied by cos of the angle. So here it would be 40 cos 30 Fx, which is exactly what we found earlier, 40 cos 30. And then if you are moving away from the angle, we are going away from 30, we are not going along the angle. This is the angle, we are going away. If you are going away from the angle, then the value of the component will be F sine of Theta. In this case, it will be 40 sine 30, which is Fy. So that's exactly what we did here. Fy is 40 sine 30. So again, I don't recommend using the shortcut until you're completely familiar with how to do this. Now let's try another one. So let's look at the second one. So this time, F is 55. Let's draw our forces, component forces. This is Fy. You can call it whatever you'd like, but since it's in the horizontal and vertical planes, then it's easy to use y and x. 
so let me draw a straight line so this will be uh, still not straight okay this will be fx so let's draw a triangle so we have our main force here which is 55 newtons and then let's follow the direction so we have the force vertical force going down the direction is very important because this is a vector sum so you have to follow the direction it cannot be in the opposite direction then we are not doing addition of vector anymore and it will not make any sense so this is fy and this is fx and remember the angle between the two resolved forces the two component forces is 90 degrees so this is where the 90 degrees is now this is a bit trickier because 42 degrees is over here 42 degrees so we want the angle to be part of the triangle for us to use it but that is not too difficult because we know that this angle is also 90 degrees which means this angle here will be 48 degrees if you didn't want to do this and you wanted to use 42 degrees we can also draw the same triangle another way this is still the hypotenuse 55 but this time we can draw the horizontal component up here that means we are adding starting with the horizontal component and then the vertical component it doesn't matter which we draw first as long as you start at the right place and end at the right place so this is fy so this is another possible triangle that we can draw the directions are correct we are beginning here we are going to the right and down and we are ending at the end of the force which is correct now this angle here is 42 degrees so you could do it either way you would still get the same answer now let's try to find fx first so let's look at the angle 42 degrees fx is adjacent to the angle therefore we have to use cosine so cosine cos of 42 degrees is equals to fx over 55 rearranging to make fx the subject of the equation fx is equal to 55 cos 42 which is equals to 40.9 newtons now let's try to find fy so fy is opposite to 42 degrees so we would use sine so sine of 42 degrees will be equals to fy over the hypotenuse which is 55 newtons rearranging and making fy the subject we will get fy is equals to 55 sine of 42 degrees and this value is 36.8 newtons now let's try something a little bit trickier so now let's resolve along the slope and perpendicular to the slope so we are going to resolve in two perpendicular directions still but this time it is along the slope and perpendicular to the slope no more horizontal and vertical so we are going to resolve only the weight we are not concerned with any other force acting on the object let's focus on the weight so the weight of course will be acting towards the center of the earth which in our case is down so this is the direction of weight we want to resolve along the slope so now there is two directions that is along the slope that is either down the slope or up the slope now when you think about it logically the weight is going to have an effect down the slope instead of up the slope but mathematically you would know that this component weight component cannot be resolved beyond 90 degrees so if we were going in this direction in the counterclockwise direction then 90 degrees would be up to here here the component would already be zero and there would not be a component beyond that whereas when we are going in the clockwise direction this angle is still less than 90 degrees so we know that the weight component is acting down the slope so this is how we know it what about perpendicular to the slope we have the same scenario it can either be up like this or like this this is perpendicular to the slope now how do we know which one it is we use the same logic this one when we go clockwise this is 
more than 90 degrees because this is 90 degrees and so this component is not possible so we know that the actual component is down as well so these are the two components along the slope and perpendicular to the slope components of weight so when we resolve this we have to form our triangle again but this time we don't have any angle given to us directly inside the triangle let's look at how to look for the angle this is 30 degrees so if this is 30 degrees, if we extend this down, then we can form a right angle triangle. So in this right angle triangle, this angle here will be 90 minus 30, because this is 90 degrees and this is 30 degrees. So it's 90 minus 30 and we get 60 degrees. Now remember that this angle here is the same as this whole angle, because this component here is parallel to the slope. So it is the same angle. So this is 60 degrees. Now we have an angle. Now it is also worth noting that this angle here will be 90 minus 60, which is 30 degrees. So the angle between the weight and the direction perpendicular to the slope will be the same as the angle of inclination here, 30 degrees. So now let's draw a triangle. So again, you can use whichever triangle I'm going to use okay, let's draw a weight first so since the mass is 3 kg the weight will be W is equals to mg let's take the gravitational acceleration to be 10 so this will be 3 times 10 which is 30 newtons so this is going to be 30 now let's complete our triangle of forces so this component here, let's draw this component. So I'm going to call this WA. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I would call this WB for easy reference. So I'm going to draw WA. Just follow the angle of WA. So WA is going to be in this direction. This is WA. And then we're going to draw WB. So WB is here. Let's draw WB and complete our triangle. This is WB. So here is not so clear where the right angle is. Always remember that the right angle is between the two resolved forces. So WA and WB are our resolved forces. This is the right angle. This is 90 degrees. So let's insert the other angles into the triangle. Now the angle between WA and W here is 30 degrees. So please look out for the two forces first and then find the angles between them. So this is 30 degrees. And then the angle between WB and W is 60 degrees. So again, between WB and W. So this here is 60 degrees. So we could use either angle to find our resolved forces. Now I'm going to use 30. So let's use 30. So if you use 30, let's find WA first. WA is adjacent to 30 degrees, which means we have to use cosine. So cos of 30 degrees would be equals to the adjacent side, which is WA over 30. And so WA would be equals to 30 cos of 30 degrees, 26.0 newtons to three significant figures. Now let's find WB. So if you are using 30 degrees, WB is opposite to 30 degrees, which means we need to use sine. So let's do that. Sine of 30 degrees will be equals to WB over 30. So WB will equals to 30 sine 30 which is equals to 15 newtons. Sine of 30 is just half. So there we go. Now we have the components acting perpendicular to the slope and along the slope. Let's try another one. I encourage you to pause the video and try to work out the solution for yourself first. So let's find the direction. Let's draw the weight. Weight is acting downwards. This is the weight. And let's find the magnitude of the weight. W equals to mg. So we are taking G as 10 again, so 4 times 10. So W is equals to 40 newtons. 
So let's draw our triangle. Draw W first. Now draw the components. The components here. This is perpendicular. Let's call this W A. And we have along the slope as well. So let's call this W B for reference. Now let's draw the triangle. So we have W A in this direction. W A and W B going down the slope like this. W B. And let's insert the angle. So what is the angle? Again, we have our right angle triangle here, which means this is 90 minus 20, which is 70 degrees. And we have this angle here. So remember, this angle will be the same as the angle of inclination of the slope. So this is 20 degrees. Why is it 20 degrees? Because this is 90 degrees. And so 90 minus 70 is 20 degrees. So here, I just want to note that you can also draw the other triangle. What is the other triangle? You draw the weight first, and then you draw WB first instead of WA. So you draw WB like this, WB, and then WA. You would get the same thing. This is WA. So when you draw it this way, then you can see that the angles, okay, let's fill in the angles. Now, let's look at the first triangle. The angle between W and WA is 20 degrees. So, W and WA, the angle is 20 degrees. Remember, the right angle is between the two result forces. So, this is where the right angle will be. And this will be 70 degrees. Now, on the other triangle, we will take the angle between WB and W first, which is 70 degrees. So, WB and W, here the angle is 70 degrees, and this is 20 degrees. Now, I'm just going to use one triangle as to avoid confusion. So, I'm going to get rid of this triangle. Alright, let's find the value of WA. So, this W, the value we've already found to be 40. So, let's find WA. Let's use 70 degrees. So, if we are using 70 degrees and we wanted to find WA, WA is the opposite side to 70 degrees. So, if it is the opposite side, we would have to use sine sine of 70 degrees would be equals to WA to 40. So when we rearrange and make WA the subject, WA is equals to 40 sine of 70 degrees. Now this would be equals to 37.6 newtons to three significant figures. Now let's try WB. WB is the force that is adjacent to the angle. So if it is adjacent, we use cosine. So cos of 70 degrees would be equals to WB over 40. So WB over 40. Again, let's make WB the subject. So this will be equals to 40 cos of 70 degrees. And this would be equals to 13.7 newtons to three significant figures. Now let's address the matter of why the component of the force at 90 degrees to the force is zero. So if you remember the shortcut, so let's say this is F. Now let's say this is the component force, so I'm going to call it FC for F component, and this is the angle theta. So if you remember the shortcut, when we are resolving along the angle, Fc will be equals to F cos of theta. So what happens when theta is 90 degrees? When theta is 90 degrees, the component force will be equals to F cos of 90 degrees. And cos of 90 degrees is 0. So the component force here is equals to 0. Now what happens when we go beyond 90 degrees? So when we go beyond 90 degrees, you will get, so let's take a value, let's take a specific value. So let's say F is equal to 100 degrees. So this is beyond 90 degrees. Now the component force here will be equals to F cos of 100 degrees. Now if you put this into your calculator, you will get negative 0.17 F. So we are getting a negative value here. Now this is a force. 
if we have a negative value, force is a vector, if the force has a negative value, that means the direction of force is actually in the opposite direction. So that's why we don't have any component beyond 90 degrees. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button and do subscribe because I produce one video every week. You can follow my Instagram and TikTok for short lessons every weekday as well. See you in the next video.